Oh, sorry, for some time I've been speaking about it. So, Chitana Charitamrita, Chapter 8. <coughs> so, we started actually the Chitana Charitamrita from the beginning. Adilila. Now we are in Chitana Charitamrita. Madalila. Raya Ramana Sambhad. For some days we have been speaking about only one verse. Only one verse we have been speaking about. Which question did Mahaprabhu ask to Raya Mananda? He asked about the sadhana. About what? The ultimate goal, sadhana. And that which you can attain by sadhana is sadhya. So tell me. So the process to attain the ultimate goal is called sadhana. Mahaprabhu didn't ask about the sadhana, the process. First he said, establish the sadhya, the goal. So in this context, context Bhaktivinoda Prabhupada and Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Bhaktivinoda Prabhupada, they, we were telling something about their conceptions about it. That first they have to establish what is the goal, the ultimate goal. Then, then, according to that, our so we discuss a lot about it. So before establishing the sadhavasu, the ultimate goal, we have to establish start from varnashram dharma. So to please Lord Vishnu, there's no other way, only one way to follow Varnashram Dharma, to please Lord Vishnu. We have to do Varnashram Dharma. Do you know what is Srinkala? Srinkala means rules. So people follow their lives without rules. So a life without rules is the life of an animal. What is, how is the life of an animal? There is no rules. 
The animal is only worried about what he's eating and whatever he's doing. Like, whatever he wants, whenever he wants, he eats. Have you seen or not? Like, for example, the shower means the ox. The ox, he sees some the crop of somebody and then he just eats that those plants of the agriculture of somebody else like whenever he wants or whenever he wants he sleeps whatever he is he also stools and pass water on, according to his design so standing on, on his own food he also urinates and defecates on his own food no, at least we eating here, that's not a uh, uh, stool and pass here, but no, he's not taking this, he also stool and pass the same place. So he has no common sense and doesn't follow any rules. So these are animals. That's why Shala Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in the book Chaitanya Shikshamrit, he gave a beautiful description about Varnashram Dharma. If I speak like this, you can hear? So two books of Bhaktivinoda we have to read. Jaiva Dharma and Chaitanya Shikshamrita. What did I say? Jaiva Dharma and Chaitanya Dharma and Chaitanya Shikshamrita. Two books of Jaiva of Bhaktivinoda Thakur you have to read. Have you seen these books? It's in Hindi also manifesting, no? It's in Hindi, also English and Bengali also. Not from our temple, from Chaitanya Mata. Iskon also has. Because it's a beautiful description. If you really want to follow the spiritual life, progress your spiritual life, if you want to improve your spiritual life, then you must start from Varnashram Dharma. A outra atitude de São Paulo diz que vai começar agora. Actually, um, what did I say? Except for India, no other Western country, no other, follow the Varnashram Dharma. So in India is called Bed Bihita Desh, means a country that follows the Vedic rules. So, actually, nowadays, in the present time, actually, we are following the culture of the Western countries, mostly in India, also. That's why this Vedic culture, slowly, slowly, these rules of the Vedic culture, we are forgetting all this. Understand? So, whatever we eat, how we behave, everything, actually, nowadays, is just just like Western countries. And we think this is higher, like following the Western culture, isn't it? We, ah, if you don't speak English, I don't know anything, you don't know how to speak English. So if you speak like one or two things in English, all the villagers, people in villages, they will give you so much honor to you. But if you speak your own mother language, nothing, it's nothing, it doesn't mean anything. This is happening, this is going on. All of us, we want to imitate the Western culture. And people of Western culture, they want to, they want to also imbibe with the Vedic culture. We don't want to put sari. Like we don't want to call our father, oh no, sorry, our father and grandfather, they were, they were dhoti like Vedic culture clothes, but we don't want to use this kind of clothes of Vedic culture. We want to use like Western clothes. We want to use Thai, for example, and other kind of clothes. We want to use shoes and boots because we like this culture, thinking it's higher. This is true. The smaller the clothes, the, the ladies, they feel I mean, if the ladies, they wear small clothes, like a short, like, they think it's higher, very nice, like to use this, oh, I'm very nice, like if they use very short, small, 
Yeah, short skirts and other small clothes. So I'm not saying but if not talk you're saying you can read. And and they think this is very nice and very new and nice. And like this, the society becomes contaminated, corrupted by so many thieves also. And Apaharan, so many kidnaps of ladies. Kidnaps. Why is the reason behind? Because we. This, this Vedic culture, we, we don't want to accept this. And that's why Radhamananda he's saying actually the meaning is you must follow Varnashalam. Like for example, to honor mother, father, the superiors. But nowadays nobody wants to listen about these things. Nobody wants to know about it. You can tell them a thousand times. You can scream in the mic. Your, your throat will be tired, but they'll not listen. And later they'll tell you you're crazy. They'll tell or not? You're crazy, come on. Why are you speaking this? They have to follow the Vedic culture, come on. Why are you saying this? But if you go to the Western country, countries, those devotees from Krishna's consciousness in the Western countries, you see they're wearing sari, they put tal tilak. Understand? And they eat as uh, pure food. So really, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, he gave a special contribution to the world. Something is happening, is going on. Understand? So if you really want to where enter in spiritual life, you have to follow Varnashram Dharma, you have to get married properly. Understand? Every year, I, I, two, four times, I do marriage for the Western countries, Western devotees. Actually, I don't get married, I perform the wedding. So whatever they are doing is already very nice. So if you do bhajan of Lord, at least uh, even for five days, this is so much higher. And if you stayed so much long time alive but you didn't do anything like this, it's useless. If somebody for even five days worship Bhagavan Vishnu, this is like a wealth you have for you, like a property. Life to life, this sanskara will be there for you. At least something you did, you know. So there are four varnas and four ashrams. The Gita explains. In the Gita Bhagavan says, I've created the four ashrams and four varnas, and people, they establish themselves in these varnas and ashrams according to their qualities and to their karma. <laughs> so these four varnas and four ashrams, so, if you do Bhagavan Dharma, Bhagavan becomes pleased. Because Bhagavan created the rule. If you, if you create some rule and some law you, you, and nobody follows, you'll be unhappy or not? Yes. So, so Lord is thinking, I created all these rules and laws, but 
those who follow these rules, Bhagavan becomes satisfied with them. Understand? But slowly, slowly we're becoming, we're becoming atheist. You don't want to follow the Veda Puranas Upanishads. The more the Kali Yuga grows, the more this is happening. Actually, for 10,000 years, what Lopta was doing? What will disappear after 10,000 years? What? What will finish? Ah, okay, after 10,000 years of Kali Yuga, Varnashram Dharma, it will be finished. Actually, the first 10,000 years of Kali Yuga, they are called Golden Age, Swarna Yuga. Eu também procurei aqui no Vanamadura Brasil e não achei também ao vivo, não. Acho que não entrou. Então, so now still there is something. But slowly, slowly, this will all disappear. This Vanasham Dharma, Shilasumi Maharaja, explained this in one of his books. Uh, Shmad Bhagavatam describes about the... about this. So, those who don't follow Vanasham Dharma, they become Vyabhichari, means... Do you know what is a Vyabhichari? It means somebody who is not following the rules properly. And and the living entity starts suffering so many rog and so means disease and lamentation. And in the end, the jivas, they go to hell. So here he's saying in Bengali, if you really want to get some uh, spiritual benefit, benefit in your life, certainly you must follow Varnasaram Dharma, certainly. If you want some spiritual benefit in your life, you must follow Varnasaram Dharma. So, the birth of a human being. So, according to the previous, to the previous life, samskaras. According to the samskara you have in your previous life, from previous lives, you'll behave and act accordingly. But also, the association also. But actually, the association can change. Like the samskaras you have from previous lives can maybe cover the samskaras because of bad association. Suppose, small kid, when he's 8, 10 years old, he's with his parents, then he's doing... Yesterday, so many young kids here. A good samskara, then he's in Tilak, coming to temple, very all devotee. But after 10 years old, maybe the boy gets bad association. And then you know, goes, you know, when the kid is small, he's like Prabhupada Maharaj learning many shlokas and coming to the temple, being nice devotee, he has shika, everything. But, but after 10 years old, maybe, you know, so why the, then the, the, the kid, you know, deviates and doesn't want to use shika, maybe start eating meat, everything. Why? Because of a bad association. You can see in your own family, you can see this thing going on. But before, when it, the kids, they follow the instruction of the parents. Whatever the father and mother say, they follow. They go to school. But when the kid grows up, and then he goes to school and college, oh, society says, why do you use this sika, this hair on your back of your head? Why do you bring the tea thing, like the food from your, from your house, this potato sabji? What are you eating? Come on. You don't eat carrots? Come on. You don't eat onion garlic. It's so delicious food. How can you not eat that? They'll talk. They tell like this or not? Then the, they start eating like this. And the kid, I mean, now the young man becomes out of control. You understand? And nowadays, they go also to Western countries. Then they want to marry a Western country, a lady, Western lady. But if you, if you marry a white girl, your life will be disgraced. You'll be crying you completely. Do you understand? Looks like very nice, no? Because she has their own, her own samskara, white girl, western girl. And then she will 
she will have two kids of you, then she'll beat on your back and kick you away, kick you out, and then you're... I, I've seen this. That's why Gurudev said, Indian should marry an Indian and Western should marry an East Western. This is not my lecture. This is the lecture of Gurudev, he told. Western people should marry Western people. Why? Because they have their, their samskara, their impressions, and their like, culture is different from yours. This is okay. Paramartika spiritual life is different. Okay, you're following. But um, in material samskara, is different. Material some impression is different from a Western person and from an Indian person. So. So it's good if you stay in your own place. I've seen many devotees of ours, they ma married Western girls and then they're then they crying. They have one or two kids, but because they have this nature on these Western girls, they will not keep only one husband. They don't like one husband in their life. So they go to another man like and then they, they're crying, the Indian, because they cannot give up also. The, the Maya Mohan. Okay, the wife left them, and but you know how to give up the kid that he had with the Western girl. You don't want to because you no, know, so many rules. Also, you can also give up your son. I prohibit so much, but still now they, they, they are crying because also they are attached and you know. all. So, so I told them not go, don't go, don't go. But they didn't listen to me. So, what to do? I told. Spirituality is one thing, and material life another thing, isn't it? So spirituality, okay, we are all together doing the bhajan of God. The question is, and Indians, we are together by a rope, like together. But this culture of society is different, you know. Understand? Isn't it? Uh, isn't it? Tell me. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur says. So Raymond started from this. So this is Loka of Bhagavad Gita, did he say? So if you stay in your own, Varna is nice. I mean, what is Swadharma Paradharma? It means if you do your own duties, is very good. If you do duties of others, then this is not good. Through this conception, we see that we have to be established in our own, in our own uh, Dharma, following the Varnashram Dharma. Otherwise, your life will be disgraced because you'll not be able to sp practice spiritual life. Tell me if you'll be able to. Try to get married and check if you'll be able to do spiritual life. Not possible to perform a spiritual life. You know, to speak of spiritual life, to speak of, speak of bhakti. Even then, what? Ah, uh, offering oblations to your forefathers like Srada for your father, you know. Who will do that? Tell me. Do you understand? So I tell you, honestly, if you marry to a Western girl and you have a kid from her, he has no samskara or she has no samskara, after Ah, this kid that you had had with her, he, he will have no samskara. So after you die, this kid will not do oblations to you, like, a, you know, after you die. You think it's easy that the kid will become devotee? No. So that's why. So finish. At least, what's Peter, the speak of Bhagavad Bhakti? Even the this even your forefathers will not be in peace but to speak of other things to speak of Bhagavad Bhakti is very far I'm not speaking like even this is very far Bhagavad Bhakti even this oblation to the forefathers will not be performed by your offspring from her 
from this Western girl, by your kids you have from Western girl. So you have to follow Vardhanasharam Dharma and do Bhagavad Bhajan and God will be pleased. So if you want to please Bhagavan Vishnu, first you have to follow Vardhanasharam Dharma. Brahmachari has Palapasanias. And Brahman Chatra Vasya Shudra. You have to stay in your own position. And but in all conditions you are, your goal is to do Bhagavad Bhajan and to worship Krishna. Okay, maybe you're a sannyasi. But if you're a sannyasi but you didn't do bhajan, there's no benefit. Do you think only using this loin clothes, like this small cloth that the sannyas use? Do you think you will attain to Lord? If it, it will be easy to attain to Lord by just by taking sannyas. So many. So many mayavadi sannyasis exist, are there. If you think that only by eating fruits you will attain to God, so many monkeys are there also. Did they attain to God? Some people say, ah, you can just live by eating fruits. But if I would be able to attain to God only by eating fruits, the monkeys would they also only eat fruits, you know. One teacher told, listen to all his students. From now on, you should not drink buffalo milk. Don't drink buffalo milk. Or they also become very fat. You have to drink only milk from pure cow. Pure cow means a cow who, who eats very nice uh, grass, etc. So you should drink what? The milk of cows. And like Krishna used to graze the cows. Eh? Krishna also used to drink milk. You know, directly from the other of the cows. Krishna, you know, when milking the cow the, from the other directly to the mouth. So the teacher told, by drinking the cow's milk, your intelligence will be strong, like it will be, it will be good for your intelligence. Then the students told, why are you giving a wrong teaching to us today? Actually, the cows are going like a diminishing and the buffaloes are more. And then the students ask, the, 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 cow, the cow for one complete year, he is drinking the cow's milk, but does he have intelligence, the cow? So people give this kind of logic. No, this. The cows, the calf, the, he drinks for one whole year the, the mother, mother milk, cow's milk. Sometimes you take milk, sometimes not. But the cows, they always get milk for a year and the cows are so foolish. The cows, you know, baby calf. Understand? I think, sorry, just correcting what I said before, the teacher also told that now the buffaloes, people like are growing more buffaloes than cows, and that's why also people are so foolish nowadays, because they're drinking more milk of buffalo. Just correcting something I said in the past. So by following Varnashram Dharma, so if you follow your own duties of your own Dharma, then it's very good. But if you follow duties of others, then it's not good. And what is the source of a, the source? Utsav means source. The source of a, of a human life. What is the source of having a human life? Of a spiritual life? Is dharma jivan means following the rules of religion. Bhaktivinoda Thakura said. You know that Kirtan in Bengali? Mm -hmm. 
काम करने के लिए अपने जीविका पा to sustain your life like you can do many things to maintain your life like having business etc because to progress your life to be alive you need to do something you know? There's no fault in like having a like you can open a shop, like for example a shoe shop. She wants to open a shoe shop. It's okay. Just I'm not saying to open a beer shop or some pub. Don't do something which is against the rules, morals. But like don't I'm not telling you to open a pub or a beer shop. When I said do anything to maintain your life, doesn't mean you have to open a beer shop like somebody, some place they open, they, they sell meat or alcoholic beverage. I'm not saying this. So what is the source of a dharmic jivan? I mean, is a, what, is, what is the source of a religious life? Is following Varnasham Dharma and slowly, slowly progressing. This is the source of having a religious life. That's why. Mahaprabhu told what? When he heard this, Mahaprabhu told this is external. Eho Bhaja. Eho Bhaja means. Mahaprabhu said, This is external. Tell me more. So you have to remember. Because remember, Mahaprabhu, he wants to listen about the Swarupagata Dharma, means the spontaneous nature of the soul. Again and again, for many days I told you. Swarupa Anubandi Briti. Remember? When the Jiva manifested from Tatastha Shakti, the Jiva has a Swarupa Anubandi Briti. This is a technical word, but you must remember. Swaru, what did I say? Swarupa Anubandi Briti of the Jiva, of the soul. Like in science and chemistry, when you study, there are so many technical words that also come in your studies. So in the same way, this is a technical word, which one? Swarupa Anubandhi Vritti, of the soul. Means that when the soul manifested from Tatasta Shakti, the Jiva has one ten, uh, spontaneous nature in its own Swarupa, means in, within him, within the soul. What is this tendency? To be the servant of Krishna. Actually, the Swarupa of the Jiva means the Jiva's nature is to be servant of Krishna. Britya means servant. There's only one controller, Krishna. And all of all of us, we are servants. Sivaka Das. So the Prabhu, the Master, and the servant. So there's one Prabhu. One Mahaprabhu and two other Prabhus, Adwaita Chara and Nityananda, they serve Mahaprabhu. So Mahaprabhu is Mahaprabhu, no? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and there are, there are other two Prabhus, Adwaita Chara and Nityananda Prabhu. They are also Bhagavatata, Ishvara Tata, Adwaita Chara and Nityananda, but still they are serving Mahaprabhu. When you say Sangha, Sangha Upanga as Parishadam. So Swa Anga. Who is this? The own limbs of Lord. Own limbs. Adwaita Chari and Nitranda Prabhu. And who is Upanga? Srivasta. Upanga is Srivasadi Bhakta Varinda. The Anga of the Anga means the limb of the limb, like a sub limb, is. Shivas, Thakur, and the other devotees. Suppose a tree, and there are the branches of the tree, and branches, they have also have sub-branches. Isn't it? Okay, coming back. So the Jiva is a servant, a Sivaka. And Bhagavan is the Prabhu, is the Lord. So to serve God, is the duty of the servant to serve the master is the duty of the servant so 
So the Swarupa Anubandi Briti means the spontaneous nature in the heart of the soul. What is it? To serve Bhagavan. Like a no, servant's das. Maybe in Dasa Sakavatsadya or Madhurya or except for Shanta Rasa, all the other rasas they have. Seva Abhiman means this ego of being servant of Lord. M whether it be Nanda Maharaj, Subhala, Shridam, or even the gopis like Srimad Radhika, all of them, they, they feel as being the servants of Krishna. Understand? Nanda Maharaj also in separation, what he's saying? What is the verse? When Uddhava stayed all night saying that ah, Krishna came in the form of your son, but actually he is Bhagavan. You are very fortunate, you know, Uddhava too. And in the end, Nanda Baba, what did he say? Hey, what you're saying. I'm not ready to accept what you're saying. Still, in my mind, in my heart. My life again and again. I'm life after life. I just want to serve Krishna. So, in separation state, separation mood, Nanda Maharaj is saying, I want to speak of others. Even Nanda Maharaj in Braj, he also feels he is a servant of Krishna. But actually this is in separation mood. When he is in separation, then he feels like this. He feels he is the servant of Krishna. Shmatradka also says, Kasa Kasa, like Krishna, where are you, where are you? I am your servant. Also we see this also in Shmatradka. All of them, they feel they are servants of Krishna. Because Das means Sevaka or Sevika. Is she may or may your servant. So in the jivas and in the parikaras, associates and also jivas, all of them they have abhiman, this ego of being the servant of Krishna. Sevaka or sivika means male or female servant of Krishna. Because there is only one Parampurush, Supreme Enjoyer, Bhagavan. This is the Siddhanta. There is only one Purush, Enjoyer, Krishna. What is Purush? Purush is that person who accepts the service. What? Purush is that one who is the object of the service or who enjoys the service. So there is only one Sevya Vastu, only one person to be served, Krishna. And Arasabhritya, all the rest, everyone else is servant. And everybody dances according to his desires. Bhagavan is making us dance, everyone. May whether it be Subhal Sridam, Nanda Jashoda, Radha and Gopis, everyone. This Param Purush Bhagavan, according to the Tata Siddhanta, he is making everybody dance. Actually nothing happens, nothing happens without Krishna's desires. Shrimati Radhika knows, she understands. And this is the goal of Shrimati Radhika. Why the Purana is called Shmatradka Shmatradka? Because she always fulfills the desires of Krishna. Shmatradka is not independent, according to Tata Vichar. Actually, everything she's doing is according to Krishna's desires. Everything she does. An actual Sevaka and Sevika, who can be a real servant? That person who realizes the desire of their worshipable deity and fulfills that. We are not have, being a complete servant, a real actual servant. Why? We don't know the heart of our worshipable deity or the person we are serving to. Do you understand? A proper service, complete service, sushtu seva means complete service. When we will do that? When? You know the desire, you know the heart of the person who you are serving, your worshipable date. That's why that beautiful book that Vishnu Chakravati wrote, many times I've read, I've spoken about this book, the Prima Samputa. This book is in Hindi, Bengali, English, in all the languages it's available, this book. 
What is showing this Prema Samputa? How Krishna himself comes in the form of the Vangana. <coughs> Sorry. And he's asking to Shimadera, why do you do man? Why do you speak so harshly with Krishna sometimes? The Vangana is asking, why do you call Krishna a thief, a stupid nonsense, a rascal, a debauchee? How is he saying this? Shimati Radha um, swears Krishna like this. But why Shimati Radha does that? Actually for Krishna's happiness. And Krishna listens to this kata, to her words, and she, he feels happy. That's why whatever gopis do is to give happiness to Krishna. Whatever gopis do is to give happiness to Krishna. Whatever they do. So if the gopis say, uh, stop it nonsense, rascal. Krishna becomes happy. If Sita Devi Lakshmi would say like this, actually they never say these words. These, the, these words, they don't even come to their mouths, to their tongues, to, of Sita and Lakshmi. And also Ram would never be pleased listening to this, because he's always established in the etiquettes and rules. If you tell to a knowledgeable person, a learned person, that he's a foolish, he'll be angry with you. If you have to honor a learned, learned and scholar person, then he'll be, you know, pray to him. Or sorry, he'll be doing prayers. For example, Brahmaji is always making stavastuti, and then Krishna says, "Oh, very nice, very nice." Externally, Krishna was pleased, but if internally he's pleased or not. Uh, but the gopis do the gopis say Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Govinda, you are the Adi Purush, I worship you. Wait, what the gopis say? Stupid nonsense, rascal. You are stealing the clothes of the gopis? Only, only joking all the time? Isn't it? The gopis, they, they are not ready to see Krishna as Bhagavan. Even though it, they see the, his opulence, they saw all his supremacy and opulence, but still they are not ready to accept or they don't see him as a god anyhow. They never ever see him like God. So in the Prima Samputa, Shrimati Radha herself told, you can read and check. She said, I do man and I call Krishna stupid nonsense. Actually, for his own pleasure, Krishna becomes pleased. So, for the Krishna's happiness, the gopis, they do this. Like, whatever they eat, speak, how they walk, everything's for Krishna's pleasure, for Krishna's satisfaction. Krishna himself told. What did they say? Krishna says that when the gopis, they do man, he becomes happy. Bhartsan means when they swear, swear me, no? Call me names. I become happy. When they curse me, I become happy. Krishna says in this verse, but when the other people saying like this, Vedas to means prayer of the Vedas, I don't become pleased. Yesterday I told that even the gopis, they taught a lesson to Brahmaji. The gopis even curse Brahma. They swear Brahma also. What speak of others? Gopis didn't even uh, spare Brahma. Brahma, you, they even cursed him. You should die. Sapanti means they said. They cursed, they cursed Brahma. You should die. You die. In the commentary explains. That the gopis, which, which curse they give to Brahma? You should die. They said like this. You die. Understand? Why? Because you gave us only two eyes. How will you be able to see the beautiful form of Krishna with only two eyes? Come on. So the Baba of the gopis is so beautiful. So whatever the gopis have, whatever they do, whatever they eat, drink, walk, dress, everything is for Krishna's happiness. That's why if you read this book, uh, Prema Samput, read it. Read the Prema Samput, then you'll be able to understand. Otherwise you'll not understand anything. 
if you come to Gauri Amata, what, what you should read? Prema Samputra, because Prema and the love, it, these are religion. What do you want? What do you want? Prema. This our goal is not Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. It's Prema. And which Prema? Raja Prema. And not Saka Dasavat Sale, only the Gopi Prema we want. And the highest Gopi Prema is the Radha Prema. Actually, Radha Prema is the crowns and jewels of all the Sadhis. So if you want Radha Prema, you have to read one book certainly. This is not Prema Sampa. So Shamataratka herself, she knows. So she knows. And she says, I do everything for for the yeah. happiness of Krishna. Mm -hmm. So that story when they were doing the competition, when they were doing the competition in Radha Kundra, swimming competition. So they were having a swimming competition in Radha Kundra, checking who would come first to the other side. Then Radhika was swimming very uh, fast, fastly, and Krishna was behind, like he was behind, I mean he was not winning. Shmati Radhika was in, in all the sakis, they were clapping, Jai Ho, Radhe, Radhe. And when she was about to win, she knowingly she like sank in the water, dived, dived in the water, and then Krishna was able to overlap her and to reach the, overtake her and reach the shore. And Krishna won, and then all the Sakas were like, Oh, Jai Ho, Krishna, Jai Ho. And all the gopis, they became so ashamed. Then Lalita Vishaka asked Shamati Radhika, We were giving our Jai, like, you were about to win. Why did you normally you dove, dived? You dived in the water. Then Shamati Radhika saw, Shamati Radhika saw, because I looked behind, I looked behind and I saw that today Krishna wanted to win. Krishna was thinking, every day you win, come on, at, le at least let me, allow me to win today. So Krishna wanted to win that time. So Shumatra knowing the desire of Krishna, she herself, she accepted her defeat, like she made him, like she, knowingly she lost. She let him win. So everything is for Krishna's desire. In this world also we see something, in this material world. Nothing happens without Krishna's desires. Always there is some desire of Krishna there. Like for example, we are here now together, sitting here. This is desire of Krishna or not? And when desire of Krishna comes, then everybody goes to different places. We don't know, but everything is happening according to the desire of God, whether it be in material or spiritual world. But don't blame Krishna, okay? Because also you have your independency potency. So you can misuse it, misuse your independence potency. This will be Okay, so sorry. I have to finish the class because of the time. There's no other way. You have to follow Varnashram Dharma to please Lord Vishnu. So to progress in your spiritual life, religious life, you must follow, start in Varnashram, following Varnashram Dharma. Stay in your Varnashram Dharma and do Har Hari Bhajan, worship God. But also, only following Varnashram Dharma, you cannot attain to God. What did I say? You go to Rorav, one kind of hell. In this kind of hell, Rorav, there are small, small insects. They are very um, little, like they have poison, poisons, and they will bite you, they will sting, sting you in the hell. If you follow Varnashram only and not doing um, Hari Bhajan, worshipping God, then you will go to this road of hell, if you only follow Varnashram. And that's why, if you follow Varnashram, you must also do Hari Bhajan. Okay, you are Grihasta, you live with your family, take care of your mother, father, kids, wife, etc. But at the same time, do Hari Bhajan. Wait, wait, wake uh, up early in the morning and chant two rounds of holy names. The husband is sleeping, huh? the husband will not wake up. He's, if the husband 
Actually, all the husbands of the wives of the gopis, they were not devotees, the husbands of the gopis. They were all what? Demons. Against Krishna. You know, mainly the husbands of the gopis. So don't be upset. Oh, my husband is like this. Then you want to show, my, oh, husband, I'm chanting. Look, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Then he'll become even more like a. Uh, disturbing you. But when your husband goes to sleep, the husband goes to sleep midnight, then you can chant your Harinam. Then he will not see you chanting. No need to show off. Show off. No need to show off to your husband. This is called Bhajana Kushulata, like the art of spiritual life. So your husband is telling, telling me not to do Bhajana Gurudeva. Oh, your husband is telling right, I say. Don't show off to your husband your bhajan, then your husband will be angry. But if you do bhajan, it's always look like hiddenly. You see that also he'll be want to do bhajan in the future. <laughs> so those who are showing off to their husbands, then the husband becomes even more angry, like showing off that they are doing spiritual life. The wives showing off to the husband. If your husband is favorable, no, sorry, if your husband is unfavorable, don't show off to him. What should you do? You should not show to him that you are following spiritual life. So three things you should do secretly. Bhajan, eating bhajan, spiritual life and raman, like uh, amorous, romantic things, you should do hiddenly. This is not my kata. Actually the words of the Shastra explains. You should not show your spiritual life to others. The bhajan, uh, what? Uh, you are following your spiritual life. What is ramana, she is asking. Ramana, I told the I told the English mean romantic meeting. I told in English. She is asking, what is the meaning? Ramana, you are a good question. Huh? Gurudev is telling to her. Gurudev said, bhojan, bhajan, and ramana. Three things should be secretly, like bhojan, eating also in front of everybody. No, oh, the saints are eating so much. This saint is eating so much. And people say you're not. That's why you should not eat in front of others. People give kudrish, like bad eyes, evil eyes to the food. So Shastra explains bhajan, spiritual life, bhajan, food, and raman, romantic meeting, should be how? Hiddenly. Understand? Wake up, like two o'clock, then do bhajan. Nobody will understand, nobody will see. But if you have a favorable environment you have, then no problem. But if you are in an unfavorable environment, Suppose your family is unfavorable to you, your spiritual life, then no need to show off to them. Take your Japamala and Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And, and very slowly, uh, very low, like not loud, don't chant loudly. Or you can do when your husband is in his job, like outside the house. Isn't it? Just like a, a woman who loves another man, he's following all the rules of her house. She's doing all the works of the house, like domestic duties, domestic co chores, of course. Chores. chores, domestic chores, very nicely. But actually, she's thinking about another man. Then there'll be no any suffering in your house, no any like um, quarrel in your house. So, so in the in the gopis in the gopis house, there's no quarrel. But in my house, there is quarrel. Why? Because we are showing off our spiritual life to our husband. Ah. So if her husband is unfavorable for a spiritual life, no need to show off your spiritual life, otherwise he will give more trouble to you. Ah, look, my tilaka, then he'll say, what is this? You can put a water tilaka. Only with the water you make the shape of the tilaka. So if you, so if you show your tilak like, like where, then he'll even trouble you even more. And also, you don't have so much spiritual life in yourself, isn't it? In Brazil, there was a devotee. He was a dentist. Everybody used to go to him. Even Guru Dev used to go to him. He uses tilak in 12 parts of the body. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a female, it's a female devotee. She actually puts tilak in her body 
and she puts also the kirtan in the sound of the clinic, like the music. And so many people come to her office, dentist clinic. She she uses tilak while she's at. Yeah, you can ask. Her name is okay. She's a female dentist. She's working like this with tilak and with a kirtan going on in the back, background music. Not those like people speaking blah 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 all that thing. No, in her clinic. So if your house, but if your house is unfavorable, then don't show off. So that's why I start from Varnashram Dharma. Remember, what is this Swarupa Anubandi Briti? This Swarupa Gata Dharma means the spontaneous nature of the soul. When the soul manifested from the Tasta Shakti, the soul has one Swarupa Anubandi Briti, one tendency na natural in the soul, which is spontaneous. Doing bhajan and having association of sadhus, slowly, slowly, this will manifest just like a seed. As inside a seed, everything is there. How many, like, how are the roots and the leaves? Everything from the plant is inside. But when a seed gets a favorable environment, for example, soil and water, then the seed sprouts, becomes a plant slowly, slowly, and grows and becomes a tree and gives fruit. So, in the same way. So, Jivira Swarupa Hoi Krishna Nantyadas, the Jiva is eternal servant of Krishna Gaura Pramanandi.